everybody and welcome back to the Chaluminati podcast. As always, I am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, today, joined by, I, uh, I don't know, you're like, today to me, one of you is the Sasquatch and one of you is the Florida Ape Man of LA. Ooh. Those are our two options, Sasquatch? Uh, like, Squatch and Florida Ape? A Sasquatch or a Sasquatch from I Florida? Up a, a Sasquatch uh, ornament on my tree and it's Alex, just in my mind, I, I, you know? Look. I love you, but you're 100 percent the Florida. Ape Man. <laughs> I'll be Squatch, but you're the Florida. Ape Man. <laughs> uh, you know, we get a little cryptid every once in a while. I got to break away from the the iconic and horrible like uh, com- comedy duos that I go through every every week. I'll take it. I'll t- iconic and horrible, dude. I that's fucking hilarious. I, I I am I am baffled how many people knew who the Crankies were. I don't know if you guys got as many messages. Dude, as that I was did, a sensation. Friends of mine who I did not know listened to Chaluminati were like, "Yo, you don't know about the Crankies?" And I'm like, "Shut the fuck up! Get out of here! <laughs> how dare you accuse me of being a lesser person not for not knowing the Crankies?" Listen, Dean didn't even know who the Crankies were. He lives in like thank Northern God, England. Thank God so for like, him. Thank God yeah, for Dean. Thank God for Dean giving us a little air of legitimacy as our silent producer uh, yeah. watching over Good us like a guardian Lord. angel. Yeah. Or like an incubus. I don't know. Could the band? The Why? No, no, the, the guy who will suck your dick. What is the band? happening no, right just, now? <laughs> no? What? All right. Look, guys, welcome back to part two of Disney Urban Legends, where we closely examine some of the darkest wildest and sometimes just hmm tales ever told about the disney theme parks and where i may soon or may already have had to assure one or more of my co-hosts that the rest of jfk and greenstone are in production just because i don't want to people to think i'm leading them on for no reason i wrote this before this happened it's a script can thing. we address what happened today as of the recording of the Dude, podcast in terms of jfk yes, lore yes so look fucking the JFK docs leaked like 13,000 documents about JFK leaked today. According to the last fucking what 40 minutes that it's been out or whatever. Uh, it looks like a bunch of redacted nonsense that will change nothing, but like the alien documents, that's basically. a lot of fucking documents. Uh, so like, yeah. there'll be something I in think, there of, of import that someone will pull, but will it change anything in the end? I don't know. Unless, I unless something, I, I'm doing a JFK episode right now. Not today, obviously. That no, would be I was hilarious. like, whoa, what? Surprise! That would, it, 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 Walt Disney was JFK. <laughs> there That's it an is. urban legend for you. Uh, and no. he held, he, the power of Disney comes from the green stone. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's where I was headed. No, uh, I, I'm working on a JFK episode right now uh, with Deanna for the first time. I've never worked with Deanna before, so I'm excited about that. Uh, so I'm still going to do that episode. And then probably the next one is going to be this, whatever the fuck this stupid ass big giant leak is that ruined my plans. But that's okay because you know what? Can I ask you a question? I think that the truth is out there and I think that's more important. Yeah. Did you hold off so long because you knew this was going to happen? Do you have inside information? I can't comment on that. I can't comment on that right Whoa. now at this time. I can't Does comment your uncle on that work this time. for the FBI? Are you JFK Jr.? I can't comment on that. At <gasps> oh this my time. God. I can't they were comment. right. Do you think that, dude, do you think that we have radicalized one just totally like, foolish? I take zero responsibility for that because I go out of my way to make sure to say all those people are We've fucking idiots. We've definitely radicalized at least one Greenstone theorist. They're like, you, yeah. very <laughs> passionate about shout Greenstone. Out, shout outs to get, getting radicalized by the Chilani pod. Let us know on r slash Chilani pod. <laughs> if we have radicalized you in any way, for any reason. Maybe we should create our own NFTs and release them just no. like <laughs> That's Trump. Bad, bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. Uh, let's do this. Go on go on the subreddit and say you radicalized me by and then just give me like a one yeah, sentence. Can we get one post that says the Chilumina, the well, I can't even say our name. The Chilumina <laughs> podcast radicalized me by and then everyone underneath that just say how yes, we radicalized please. you. I will. You know what? I will put the post up in this moment as nobody knows what Secret the fuck this post. is referring to until tomorrow. <laughs> um, but there was somebody I saw on Twitter said they can't look at the word Illuminati anymore. It doesn't feel right. It has to be yeah, it's too tight. And I it's agree with too you, uptight. You know? needs to relax. We radicalize you against the uptight Illuminati. You're goddamn right. Nice. Yeah. You need that. You need that secret group of a bunch of poor dudes who live in their bedrooms, uh, you know, who don't control the but world. But you allow us to live in our bedrooms through your wonderful contribution on patreon.com slash And before Party. we shill, can we shill in another way? Why don't we have a Chiluminati bathrobe slash hood thing that you can be part of a cult? Why don't we sell them? That's a great idea. A, a little, a little like on the, sort of like the lapel, the breast there, it says like uh, Chiluminati. 
But then when you flip up the hood, it has the eye logo uh, for a third eye on your hood. Oh, You're that's welcome. a good genius, dude. Okay, I'm going to put You're that welcome. in, and I'm also going to put in for the Fresno Nightcrawler anal butt plugs that we talked about at the it's live so show. It's so simple. What? I can't believe I didn't think of that. What did <laughs> yeah, you say? We could, just, we could sell them both in, this, Alex, in the same place. Like what did you, in there what did you say? You said some I, two words or so that I didn't quite approve of. I don't what you talk. I I am merely reiterating the genius idea we came up at our live show and saying maybe now the time. I blacked out. I blacked out uh, during the live show. Yeah. What do you mean by we? I said the Fresno Nightcrawler would make a perfect butt plug. No, you you did say that. Yes. I don't think anyone's agreed that's for sale. I mean, we can sell it. Okay. Yeah. Just All because right. we can doesn't mean we should. You know. People will buy it. <laughs> Folks, if you remember last time we started ranking these just, Disney urban legends like, according to uh, North American ski trail symbols, which vary according to the intensity of each slope slash legend. Oh my God. We could just call it the night crawler. <laughs> please, please, someone stop Oh my, this that's man. perfect. Someone that's perfect. Man the off. night crawler. It's done. I, Bam. why am I in the podcasting business? I need to open up a sex store. <laughs> I was trying to pull my eyeballs out. In part one, we covered what some boastful skiers might call the baby trails, a.k.a. Green Circle Beginner and Blue Square Intermediate, where everything was just kind of fun and interesting and exciting and positive. But this time, before we enter the unknown depths of Black Diamond challenging urban legends, I want to issue our listeners a stern but fair warning. Warning. This podcast is made possible by contributions from our listeners at patreon.com slash Illuminati pod. If you don't want to miss out on ad free episodes, bodacious art, fresh merch, movie commentaries, or many, many, many unreleased minisodes, you better sign up now or else, you know, you won't get all that cool, good stuff. You have been warned. Okay. Incredible. Dean, could you make a note and uh, pitch his voice down slightly during that? So <laughs> he does sound like one of those, like, like I got relocated. TV. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 please. Thank you very much. Now, as I was pretending to segue to just a moment ago for Black Diamond level urban legends, please ask the children and the elderly to leave the room. These mysteries we're about to rip into like ravenous human sized ne'er do well Mortimer Mouse are basically similar to the previous ones, except they are a little looser, more inflammatory. They sound exactly like made up creepypastas, even though they are not, and often include violence, despair, and other not safe for work elements, including the worst type of self harm, self harm. You know the one I'm talking about. Proceed with caution because this ride goes from zero to fifty five miles an hour in less than five <laughs> seconds. Get ready, screamers! Head back, face forward, and hang on. Launch in five, <laughs> four, oh. three, two, one. Okay, okay, we're going. Ripping the Band-Aid right off. According to Snopes, in November of 1966, Walt Disney checked into St. Joseph Hospital due to rapidly declining health. And sure enough, he got an x-ray back, which showed a spot on his left lung the size of a walnut, and which he had to have surgery for immediately. Sorry about that, gang. I know we were having a fun little time there, but I had to just bring it right back down. That's the bottom of the well, first. I was, I was pulling like a, a Star Trek shake on my side. Yeah. So the listeners understand I was really putting my all in. And Jesse did nothing. And he just sat. He, he crushed it. And basically uh, to continue the roller coaster metaphor, it was all downhill from there. Uh, the next day, his entire left lung was removed. Uh, and after spending about a month getting his affairs in order and visiting relatives, his circulatory system failed due to stress from drugs and cancer treatments using cobalt on December 15th, 1966, which strangely enough is exactly 56 years ago today. Don't know why, but I hope that made your, that is so weird. I hope your, your hair raised for a minute there. Well, by the time they're listening to it, it will not actually be today. Yeah. But what's weird is we had to delay the recording a day kind of optionally, semi optionally. And like, it lined up. Oh, what? And no, then we end the JFK no, documents he's drop. No, he's with us. He's with I us mean, for you're, sure. You know, the lights still on. In the logically, Jesse, you make sense, but yeah. correctly, it, yeah, yeah, and factually, you make sense. But okay. we all learned facts are only facts if you believe. I in feel them. like them. That's too. why exactly. this country's in the shitter, my man. <laughs> you hey. are correct, sir. And yeah, and I'm going to tell you all the shit that's wrong with Disneyland, uh, which feels. Yeah. Anyway, look, Walt's death was today. It's crazy that it's his anniversary. It feels mystical. It's not nearly as interesting as all the various urban legends about what happened to Walt Disney's body after he died. Do they, which is what do, they do anything in the right parks now. special for his death day? I no, and no, and I'll get into why in just a minute. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the cryonics thing. 
According to Wikipedia, which is perfect for this kind of thing, the difference between regular old cryogenics, which is a word that people are probably more familiar with than cryonics, uh, and cryonics, is that cryonics is specifically about the concept of storing dead human remains at low temperatures for long periods of time with the intent to resurrect them in the future once technology is discovered that will be able to safely revive them. Here I don't know, a, you probably know this, Alex, but yeah. I don't know if you know this, Jesse. There are multiple companies out there that you can pay. Oh, yeah. And they will take your body on death and store it in uh, like an actual cryogenic chamber. Um, and there's multiple different prices. Like if you just want to preserve your head, that's a cost. Yeah. But depending on what you buy, that you might be stored in like a case of like 20 different heads so you'll just all be in there you know waiting for your nah, future nah, to come. it's like a mortal combat level it's like a hundred thousand dollars a year every year or something crazy Probably like that like it's a, a yearly like a subscription i don't got time for that you have, to, you have to sign up now and start I paying Alex to shoot now. Like a bow a fleming bow at my corpse on a boat push me out <laughs> the, <sea. laughs> I don't the thing that sucks that. is that the real vikings just like Sometimes they'd be on a boat, but they just bury that shit. In, in, in yeah, the well, I, like, well, then the Vikings of movies bury me yeah. like the oh, yeah. Vikings. Like the <laughs> Game of Thrones, fucking f f the, the, what, the guy from the Riverlands. So that was good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, here's a quote from Wikipedia about cryonics for Jesse to read. I don't gonna, see it. I, I'll read it. Okay. Cryonics is regarded with skepticism within the mainstream scientific community. It is generally viewed as a pseudoscience, and its practice has been uh, characterized as quackery. Cryonics procedures can begin only after the patients are clinically and legally dead. Cryonics procedures may begin within minutes of death and use cryoprotectants to prevent ice formation during cryopreservation. It is, however, not possible for a corpse to be reanimated after undergoing vitrification, as this causes damage to the brain, including its neural circuits. The first corpse to be frozen was that of James Bedford in 1967. As of 2014, about 250 dead bodies had been cryopreserved in the United States, and 1,500 people had made arrangements for cryopreservation of their corpses. Critics argue that economic reality means it is highly improbable that any cryonics corporation could continue in business long enough to take advantage of the claimed long-term benefits offered. Early attempts of cryonic preservations were performed in the 1960s and early 1970s, which ended in failure with all but one of the companies going out of business and their stored co corpses thawed and disposed of. Which is just an awful thought. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if the stories are to be believed, here is where Walt Disney comes in. And I'm going to use quotes uh, from the same awful book that Snopes points to uh, 1986's Disney's World by Leonard Mosley to kind of lay out a definitive version of the legend. So first, here's one that I stitched together from a couple quotes from Mathis to read, explaining Disney's alleged interest in the Should subject. Should I read this and one I, then? <laughs> if you want. I'm gonna, five, I, tag off. I think we can put this one right here. And now you guys are even. It was about this time that Walt Disney became acquainted with the experiments into the process known as cryogenesis, or what one newspaper termed the freeze drying of the human cadaver after death. Or eventual resuscitation. The chief problem that troubled Walt was the length of time it might take the doctors to perfect the process. How long would it be before the surgical experts could bring a treated cadaver back to working life? To be brutally practical, could it be guaranteed, in fact, that he could be brought back in time to rectify the mistakes his successors would almost certainly start making at Epcot the moment he was dead? <laughs> So to be clear, just to understand the context of this, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but the Disney World project, the entire land of it, not just the Magic Kingdom, but the whole thing was going to be something called Epcot. I forget what the thing is. It's like the something something community of tomorrow. I forget what it is, but it's mm. self-contained. It was supposed to be like an entire future city that he was going to build, not a theme park. But when he died, they just decided, you know what, let's just do like Epcot the park and it'll be like a international thing and we'll just do another Disneyland and it's going to be huge. Uh, and that's what they did. But at the time he was thinking about building literally like he was like, he was like a desperate madman searching the fringes. Yeah. Thank you, Dean experimental prototype community of tomorrow. It's exactly what it was. He was trying to search the fringes of science for a way to keep on living long enough to see his dream of a self-contained future city realized. 
thank you to Dadgrass for sponsoring this episode. And I just want to shout them out because I freaking love their product. I'm not even reading off the paper yet. I just want to say like CBD stuff is one of my favorite stuff to kind of wind down my night, help with my anxieties. And I've just been like loving using Dadgrass. With that said, it is a stressful time of year as well, and there's really no need to be stressing over the holidays when you can take a tote break. Instead of worrying about what to get the impossible to shop for family members, Dadgrass now has something for everyone, including your most loved furry friends. Take the edge off and enjoy the season. That CBD is there to help. Dadgrass is also legal, so don't stress. Organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and it mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints, tinctures, and gummies are very low in THC and high in CBD. So you can enjoy the effects of CBD with having, without having to worry about getting like that stoner head. And now they offer a variety of products so you can toke or dose just the way you like. From their CBD tincture drops to the newly launched CBD gummies and flavors like classic blackberry, ginger, good time hibiscus lime, and nighttime midnight berry. You can chill out without getting stoned. And all Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your doorstep anywhere in the U.S. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. And right now, Dadgrass is offering all of our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com chill. Go to dadgrass.com chill for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com chill. Tell me, is a man not entitled to his city of the future? Uh, the sweat of his brow. No, says uh, the man in government. It belongs uh, to the people who are still alive. <laughs> it's interesting because I feel like, I mean, the idea of freezing your body, like as as the first quote kind of points at, has the issue of like damaging the fucking brain. Like, how do you preserve the brain, which essentially turns to like goop the minute you're dead? Well, like, yeah, the you're thing, right. The moment that thing comes out of your skull, it turns to like a mush and you, gotta move, and you can't yeah, do anything. You got to move quick. Um. I feel like we'd be we're more likely to see something. And I think the easiest way to compare it is like Soma almost where we create a way to create a complex neural network on oh, you're talking about the game hardware Soma. that we use for like AI or something no and being able to copy or but we have to we still have to like learn how our brains even work yeah, in that. We still have no way to know there is like yeah. any direct copy of you is a copy of the pieces that make up you but it's not you. yeah it's not you it's not yeah, it would yet. be it would be it's, just like soma spoilers just like soma is in the end is like the realization that's like it's not you it's just the copy of you and now you the you you is still in your dying body that's what makes the fun bit of uh star trek interesting where yes technically teleportation the, the, is destroying yeah. yourself every single time and reassembling yeah. you so like philosophically Ethically, there's so many fun things to think about there. I honestly just think that in the 60s, people just in general, especially older people in the 60s, just didn't have that complex of an understanding of the human sure, like psyche. And we still don't. And at yeah, first, and still I, honestly, that's what psychedelics are for. Yeah, exactly. And at first, but at first, like in the according to this uh, bogus biography, uh, things were going well at first. Here's another quote uh, for Jesse to read. You could just keep going there, Jesse, uh, since this one, this will get us back on. Uh, yeah, track sure. here. The surgeons had taken away his diseased lung to examine it, and then were going to preserve it. Walt was pleased when he heard that. He knew enough about cryogenesis by now to be aware that it was important to hold on to all the organs, just in case the surgeons needed to treat them before putting them back where they belonged. Which so again, that's about yeah, it's about the extent to which he thought about what you guys were just talking but about. But yeah, it also was kind of like none of that's how that works. Yeah. It's just, it's such a simple... Unless you're more like future, future tech. Like, like okay, for example, the piece of his lung that was taken away uh, to pres be preserved, they were going to preserve it in fucking formaldehyde. Yeah, yep, that would have not helped at all. So, like, you know, whatever. Like, futurism is, like, the only thing I can think of where there is the other theory or thought that, like Jesse said, it'd be a brain transplant, and you, but you would have to be implanted into a basically a mechanical body that now doesn't age. And it, and might, like, it still might not be your, it might just be a copy of you. It, it's, it's probably yeah, well, if it's your physical brain moved over though. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Like a physical just data before that's not you. That is a copy of your memories. Right. And recollection but if it's your actual brain, maybe yeah. while you're alive, then, right? Like I mean, maybe no, but if like, you have continuous consciousness, but if you lose consciousness and you die, you, like I'm not even sure that when I wake no, up, then, I'm that, the then same that goes into another question. Is like, yesterday. well, 
that goes into like another question of like, well, now you're, you're talking about like, if we're all consciousness, is our brain built to receive a certain like, quote unquote, radio wave? And that's who we are because it's wired for that. I mean, let's not let's go back to Alex's point for a hot sec, because literally your body, everything about it, except for brain cells is designed to die and re like the cells you yeah. were 15 years ago are not who you are today. Yeah. No, it's like the, the ship of Theseus, Theseus, right? Yeah, exactly. From uh, WandaVision. <laughs> yeah from one that's exactly the origin of that 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 whole thing as you know as more and more Copyright cybernetics Disney. i just watched the other day a dude with no arms put a vest on that had arms on it and he's moving those damn things and i'm like that's the coolest shit i've ever seen all i'm saying is i'm here for like put my brain in whatever i want jack's arms i want yeah, like uh i'm in there. yeah I if it's me me put legs like i want to be around go down become a wheel I, I, want the mantis, I want the mantis blades from uh, cyberpunk. That's what I want. Yeah. All I'm saying I is, want to be able to slice people up with my fucking phone. I want like a foot long dick. All right. We need to have a talk about your <laughs> desires for the future. More importantly, all I want to do is, you know how in the movies, there's always the one guy who's like 300 years old and he's like, I have been alive in the body oh, of yeah. this robot. <laughs> I want that. I want to be yeah, the that dude from be that uh, guy? Prometheus. Yeah. yeah. I want to be the villain is what I'm saying. I want to be the guy. Like, you like, you are like, the villain. You're going to be man. the villain. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to be fucking Danny McBride. And this is the end. But in the, in the end. We're not going to get that. We're going to get the ready player one universe. Oh, instead. Yeah. You know that. Well, well, we're not going to be there. I love that guy. I mean, you know, hey, heck yeah. yeah. Woo. Uh, that right. never I never enjoy it next to Overwatch. Yeah. Yes. After, after Walt Disney's death, according to the book, news of his death was purposely delayed to give his inner circle enough time to sneak the body away for a secret funeral before being taken immediately into a cryo chamber where it, or at least just the head, depending on which story was stored in a sealed tomb, which other rumors online have said is possibly hidden under pirates of the Caribbean or sleeping beauty castle, that. which doesn't really make logical sense to me, but simultaneously no. feels very good from the point of view who somebody somebody who loves like comic books. So I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, it's, Maybe very... that's, that's a good like Venn diagram thing for me. Uh, and if the first actual person on record to be frozen, did it just one month after Disney allegedly did, is it really that far fetched of an idea that he did this? Uh, it's not far fetched of yeah. an idea. Well, especially if he was openly curious about it. Well, except Mathis that I have this quote from Diane Disney, Walt Disney's daughter that says this, mm. which I'm going to have you read right now. And it just kind of puts the whole thing to bed. If you ask me. All right. Well, <clears throat> there is absolutely no truth to the rumor that my father, Walt Disney, wished to be frozen. I doubt that my father had ever heard of cryonics. And indeed, in reality, Walt had always hated the idea of death and funerals and never wanted one for himself. Uh, though it wasn't expressly in his will, most of his family could attest to him saying that he wanted to be cremated just because it's like the most utilitarian way of being disposed of. And indeed... That is exactly what it says happened two days after his death at Forest Lawn Mortuary, right on his death certificate. Uh, on his death certificate, uh, he was also buried, uh, according to documents, and has a forty thousand dollar internment property at Forest Lawn Cemetery, which is in Glendale, California, not too far from here, by the way. And all that stuff about delaying news of his death and his secret funeral and stuff supposedly just comes from the fact that ever since a fortune teller that he saw as a young man told him that he would die at age thirty five early. He got extremely depressed at the prospect of his own death, even after he passed age 35. He never liked to think about it. He just did not grow emotionally in any way about his own mortality. He was just, it was a big sticking point for him his whole life. And uh, he loved life too much. Well, it was like he spent no time. He was one of those guys who just did not plan it. He did not want a ceremony at all, which is why they didn't do mm -hmm. anything at Disney. And rather than preferring to be, you know, thought of as this like corpse at this like parade or something he just wanted people to think of him people want he wanted the last time people saw him to be him like alive and smiling right so that's he he kind of just in a, slowly in a weird tapered way, it's off like, sorry not to cut you off yeah. again but it's like in a weird way it's like it, it continues the idea of like we talked about last week of him maintaining an illusion of what reality yeah. is never seeing him down or sick and just remembering him as the magical you know figure that i think a lot of people see exactly. him as now exactly and, and slash andrew ryan right and uh, so, yes, yes. <laughs> so the thing about him delaying his funeral and all this weird stuff and having a secret funeral, it's because of that. It's because he didn't want the death leaked to the press before his family found out. And there's not a single hint of any of that cryonic stuff being anything besides a rumor at all. Uh, according to Snopes, uh, they say it is possible that there are some Disney animators that could have originated the rumor just as a jape, just to like be hilarious because it is hilarious. 
Uh, and the first mention of it uh, in print comes from a 1969 issue of EC Perry magazine, uh, which is crazy. That's like two years after it happened, right? Uh, but I think the real big breakthrough for this that got it into like the zeitgeist uh, as like a thing that people had like, why did Diane Disney have to speak on this? Because it's like a huge thing that people talk about. And I think the reason that that happened uh, came from an interview in the Los Angeles Times with former Cryonic Society of California president Bob Nelson, who had this to say about it. If Jesse would not mind reading it, let me grab it right here for you and stick it in the little little chat for you there. Bingo. Walt Disney wanted to be frozen, he says, as casually as if he were talking about municipal bonds. Lots of people think that he was and that the body's in cold storage in his basement. The truth is, Walt missed out. He never specified it in writing, and when he died, family didn't go for it. They had him cremated. I personally have seen his ashes. They're in Forest Lawn. Two weeks later, we froze the first man. If Disney had been the first, it would have made headlines around the world and been a real shot in the arm for cryonics. But that's the way it goes. That is an interesting thought. Like, if if he actually did and, and was wanting to be frozen, even if they, they didn't, would have bragged about it. Yeah, and and, and it's, even if he had failed, and it, they would, probably would have. Let's be real. Yeah. It would have been an interesting. I we could be living in a different scientific future yeah. now. Of just even if we know it's not possible, money being having being put into it, and like just to see the guy, the guy who did that, he is the the guy who said that is the guy who froze the first guy, mm-hmm. and that guy is actually still frozen today. Uh, as far as I know, that's the only company around, right? But, that like lasted from uh, that. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But also the other nine people that he's frozen, they all died. They all turned to mush. Uh, so, huh. so it's a, it's a, got yeah. the first one, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that guy was lying or not. It, it I, I don't want to go against the word of Diane Disney. I'm not trying to do that. Sure. But they even did a follow up interview with, uh, Nelson, uh, for LA mag in 2013, uh, so like nine years ago, and he did not, even though it's been years, he did not back down at all. So I have a little bit more here for Jesse to read uh, from the guy. We got a call from Walt Disney Studios asking us how many people had been frozen and what kind of facilities we had and who was the medical and who the medical staff was. He was a very brilliant individual and he was checking all his bases. And that's the deal with Walt Disney being frozen. I don't think he was frozen. I think his daughter thinks that he wasn't interested in it. And if he was interested in it, he did call the right people and he just didn't get to do it. So I would say it's busted. I don't know about you, but I, I, it, it doesn't seem like anyone, including the guy that he may or may not have talked to about it, the most likely person who froze someone two months after Walt Disney died, also agrees that though he, he says Disney was interested and they didn't do it anyway. So like, I doubt that the dudes yeah, are. I, I can, I, I can, I can, I can see him having maybe been tangentially like interested, especially if he didn't like talking about death. Right. But it it seems yeah, like I don't it, think he naturally this thing that he might be very interested in as somebody who doesn't want to mm-hmm. die. Right. If, if we have perfectly frozen mammoths and things from millions of years ago. Yeah. And those things are dead. Even in the, like the most perfectly preserved man. Uh, you're dead. Like just they could clone you, it. maybe, right? Yeah. yeah, you could clone. They can maybe clone you from the from the ice thing. But, the, but you know, but is that you? Good. Well, question. it's not Futurama well, yet either. See, that's an interesting question because you'd be the identical brain, but you'd be raised different, and you wouldn't. It's not like you were reincarnated. It, it's interesting. Right. It's an interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like a oh God. You know, I wanna. I just want to bring this. It's all leading. This is. I reminded me. I discovered something t- called determinism the other day. Do you boys know what that is? Determinism. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, which is the idea that everything is everything is sort of like the unquote, opposite of free will. Yeah, but like yeah, the the fact that like the the mo- if we could if we knew how the Big Bang started, we can mathematically plot out how everything is going to go and how things are going to go. What's to say that's not happening right now right. with who we are and our decisions? And it's not just a mathematical. Oh, that's, I would torture like, my. Uh, I it, when I taught, there were several teachers at my school who were very very religious, and every day at lunch, I would torture them with questions like this. And they, it was very yeah, obvious yeah. they just didn't want to have to get in the nitty gritty with me. But I'd be like, yeah. well, how can we have free will if everything is determined God and it's part knows. of God's plan? Yeah. And they're like, well, that's, and I just, it was that kind of thing. And I just love to do that because it's like fun to have the conversation. And they were that's not, my ex- they were never uh, happy with me. <laughs> that's what my ex-girlfriend's dad used to do to the Jehovah's Witnesses that would come by. He would invite them in oh, and like awesome. debate them. It's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I think I said that on a podcast very recently. I can't remember if it was this show or not, but I did, t- I did say that recently. Uh, 
Hey, listen, one thing I wanted to address before we move on to this next section of stories about some nestor- n- notorious and mysterious incidents in the park, uh, which involve suicide. I want to I want to acknowledge that there was a recent and absolutely true news story involving a very well documented suicide that occurred at Disneyland Park on December 3rd of this month, uh, when a man yes. threw himself from the top of the Mickey and Friends parking structure uh, out of respect for the people involved. And just because the story is still developing And I don't want to say something that's going to turn out to be wrong later. I'm not going to get into the details of it. I just want to say that I did not choose this topic as a response to that. And I'm not I'm not into the idea of making light of such a fresh wound on purpose. So I just wanted to acknowledge it and let in case anybody was bothered by that. I'm not going to get into it any further, but yes, that did yeah. happen. Trigger warning as well, like an obvious trigger warning as we move into uh, a, a yes. very, very sensitive yes. topic. Just to be direct, the next section involves suicide. Proceed at your own risks, risk. I'm not exactly sure why the concept of suicide at Disneyland is such a imagination capturing thing for so many people. Uh, probably just because Disneyland is supposed to be perfect th- and stuff. And so bad stuff happening there seems extra big statement, extra surreal. Uh, but for this section... We're going to be looking at two different stories about it and try and suss out the truth from the fiction. First off, right out the gate, here's an imager link that I want you guys to look at so you guys can see the picture. But there's text involved in the image, and I want Mathis to oh read that boy. text. Oh, so boy. Here we, here we go. go. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Oh, okay. What? It is... What the hell is this? We're in the small world ride, it looks like. Like, looking up at the ceiling of the rafters of it. Yeah. <clears throat> In 1999, my family visited Disneyland. We happily rode the small world ride. I was 12 at the time, and my sister was 6. We loved every moment, and our parents smiled with nostalgia. At one time near the end, some lights suddenly shut off, and rear lights, rights, and rear lights illuminated the, t- the ceiling. The moving display parts shut off, and crew members wearing red overalls walked along them to help passengers in the boats onto the stages to direct them out of the building via emergency exits. A voice came over the loudspeakers. Disneyland thanks you for your visit. Please evacuate the attraction in order in an orderly fashion. Keep looking forward and follow the directions of staff. Thank you. The staff wouldn't tell us much as they quickly ushered us out of the building. Ambulances were outside and a police car was parked in the main walkway. At the time, my mother still had her camera out and snapped a few photos of the crewmen and close-ups of mechanical children. She snapped a last-minute photo of whatever uh, of whatever to use up the last roll of film on the camera since we were going to develop them later on in the afternoon anyway. This was the last photo of the reel aimed at the ceiling. And now I see the man hanging from the ceiling, um, <laughs> realizing what we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A man hung himself and you can see him pretty like now. Like he's like red overalls and everything is, is just this a true story there. or based off of this image. So what I'm going to tell you is that this does not seem in reality to be anything more than a picture of one of these small world dolls that flies across the ceiling on some sort of wire or line. Uh, and okay, there's no okay. record of any death like that ever being reported at the park, nor do the people I, at It's a Small World wear red overalls when they work at the attraction. Uh, where, uh, weirdly, I think I have heard of this rumor. Before. Yeah, it's like I say, yeah. these are like pretty fa- I, everything I've done on here has been like a pretty well-known urban legend in the right circles. But if I guess if you're a conspiracy theorist, you're probably imagining that Disney would try and cover up something like this rather than let it leak to the press. So. Don't worry about that. More on the dolls of It's a Small World uh, a bit later. But I just wanted to point out to that because we're talking about suicide. I would, I would and this say this is the one that always comes up based on the way, just like you just said about Disney and not wanting people to know stuff. You would think mm-hmm. that if there was a suicide, the person's dead already. So they would be like, all right, well, stop people from getting on the rides, finish up everyone who's on the ride and then shut then, it down for the then day. Take it down. Yeah. Then take it down. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Like I say, this is a very famous picture. You even may have seen it yourself, listener, uh, if you are into Disneyland creepypasta or whatever. But yeah, this is just a fucking another one of the dolls on the ride. Mm. But like I say, more on the dolls later. Uh, Next, if you know your theme parks, you'll know that in the 2010s, Disneyland Paris, previously known as Euro Disney, was in some financial trouble. I believe there was a defunct land about this topic at one point. Uh, or it had to do with Michael Eisner or something, but it was like basically the story of Euro Disney having pr- having pro- problems in the 2010s. Apparently, younger, inexperienced uh, French top management took on more and more roles over half a decade uh, or so because Disney didn't completely own the park. Uh, there was like uh, some sort of prince or some something uh, like a Saudi prince or something had like 10 percent. Disney had some of it. And then a company called Euro Disney, I believe uh, that was French, like owned a large portion of it as well and uh that's that's just me being very broad on that so forgive me if i'm a little bit mistaken but basically 
things began to deteriorate quickly because these young new managers were coming in and they were cutting costs and doing things that you shouldn't do at a theme park about making everybody have a great time. And it really caused a problem uh, in, in Disneyland Paris. And in fact, here is a quote from a maintenance man slash union activist called Hervé Somad for Mathis to read from an article in the independent from 2010. So I'm going to drop that right here for you. What we sell is something wonderful. We sell smiles. We sell the happiness of children. We all love our jobs and what our jobs represent. But in the last few years, there has been a new management approach, which has, in many cases, made our working lives intolerable. Exactly. So this is just proof that from a union activist in the ranks that this was actually happening. So from there, things take a turn towards the creepy pasta adjacent very quickly. Allegedly, in 2010, two separate cooks at the park took their own lives in response to the situation. Uh, it, it almost sounded fake to me at first because you're thinking, oh, French chefs, you know, faced with the premise of reheating food would like do something really extravagant and, and, and weird like this. But in reality, one chef really did throw himself in front of a train one day after another one of his colleagues threatened suicide. And the other chef, his father-in-law uh, reported that he found a message scratched into the wall of his son-in-law's house, which said, je ne veux pas retourner chez Mickey, which means I don't want to go back to Mickey's. Like some kind of Five Nights at Freddy fucking yeah, environmental storytelling shit. Yeah, what? I know it sounds made up, but I went and I verified it all myself. It's true. This was reported on in many major news outlets. Though Disney denies any wrongdoing and claims to have investigated both cases thoroughly and that they weren't, those suicides were not a result of anything that Disney did. And that's not even all, because three years later in 2013, right after being called into his boss's office, a garden worker uh, at Disneyland Paris poured gasoline all over himself and tried to light himself on fire. And he only didn't do it because another guy saw what he was doing and like fucking tackled his ass to the ground and saved his fucking life. Uh, which is, I think, a pretty God. grand gesture to make as an employee of a fucking happy ass theme park that's supposed to be great to work for also. Um, since then, uh, I guess Disney has taken back full control of the park and invested a lot more money in the park. And theoretically, I believe things are getting much better there. Um, but I have no idea why these people chose such gruesome and disturbing ways to go. Uh, maybe it's just a cultural thing, or maybe it really was just like so, so, so awful. Uh, but I hope that the people who work there today are in a much better mental place. Anyway, time for a short Reddit post palette cleanser. Here we go. <laughs> Last time we did a Disney episode, I talked a little bit about how awful grad night was, if you remember, because it's a bunch of drunk, horny, stoned, unsupervised teenagers locked inside Disneyland together after hours. I was stuck in a traffic jam of school buses for half of mine and half of the park was closed so they could set up a giant projector to premiere Pirates 3 on Tom Sawyer Island uh, and closed half the fucking rides in the park. Uh, but now that you know what grad night is, here's a spicy little unverifiable post by Reddit user steak and a side out. of this steak. This is a thing that happens in LA. Yeah. yeah. You all yeah, just all like, the high schools. You all just like go there at night. It's a no. It's a it's a it's a thing like Disney puts it on and it's it's it starts like after hours. So you show up at like 1130 and you stay there till like four in the morning and and then it's like a party there's like areas where you can dance and stuff it sucks it's awful it's exactly as shitty as you think it is and uh and uh, like i say i literally got stuck in a traffic jam of buses arriving for grad night for something that i paid 200 dollars for spent half of it sitting in a school bus so the LAUSD school bus driving past a pie restaurant uh it sucks uh but uh this is a this is a post by Reddit user steak and a side of steak in response to the question Classic. employees of Disney. What is the craziest thing you've seen happen in the park? And Jesse, I want you to read this one because I think you're going to have a good time with it. Grad night 2007. Oh boy. <laughs> I was walking out of the space mountain break room and saw one of my guy friends at the then honey. I shrunk the audience. Oh boy. Looked like he was about to vomit. And one of my girlfriends who was laughing hysterically, apparently in the dark of the theater, some girl decided this would be a good time to go down on her boyfriend. Oh, Does no. she know about halfway into the show? One of the effects is this little tube <laughs> that comes wiggling out of the seat <laughs> to simulate mice running by your legs. This hit her throat. She bent oh, no. down and he was bleeding pretty profusely a grad night to remember. Whoa! Yikes, dude! And, and there you have it. 
No idea if it's true or not, since it's not exactly the type of injury you're going to want to like report to anyone ever for any reason. Uh, but I will say that before I found this Reddit post, which actually sounds pretty believable, I had seen places where it instantly morphed into a story about her biting the penis fully off. Uh, but since okay. I, I think, but I think that since something like that would have almost certainly made the news, like you can't bite your penis off and not get on the news. There's no way somebody's not going to bite your penis off at honey. I shrunk the audience and you're not going to be all over the news. Uh, and there's no official record of anything like that happening. Uh, and trust me, I'm like a big Disney guy. I would notice if something like that happened. I think this almost decade old Reddit post is the original version where it's just a much more believable 4D blowjob. We should job like instead. really research this. <laughs> I'll put on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. If anyone wants to come help me, yeah, we can, we yeah, can uh, see what's going on. Yeah, you'll you'll get tickled in the throat by the mouse tails. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have not. I just you know uh, you you made the joke. I'm yeah. good. Up next. We hit one of the most creatively inspiring kinds of theme park urban legends, one we're going to revisit a few more times today, uh, at least in terms of creepypastas, where entire abandoned theme parks come into the equation and serve as the setting for many strange happenings. So let's look at two places that might embody this trope best with Discovery Island and Disney's River Country, both previously located in Bay Lake near the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. Uh, also, I'm going to be describing some animal abuse briefly in the next few minutes, so skip ahead if that's not your vibe, except you guys can't skip ahead because you are sitting here watching I was going to say, me. I am where, where, where? So I guess if you guys don't want to hear that, just disassociate until the end of the story. So there you go. All right, yeah. all right. Uh, all right, so first we're going to talk about Discovery Island. If you want to think of Disney's Animal Kingdom Park in Florida as Jurassic World pre-disaster, Discovery Island is like Jurassic Park post-disaster, Okay. So, originally, it was opened in 1974 on a historical natural island as an attraction called Treasure Island, uh, which Disney operated as kind of like a low-key, kind of like pirate-themed adventure island where you could, like, check out wildlife and chill out. Uh, but then they uh, renamed it Discovery Island when it became a full-on zoological park. And unlike a lot of the more wilder, touristy stuff that the other Disney parks had going on, it was a pretty sort of low energy, sort of low production value affair, more about seeing animals and hanging out on a beautiful island in Florida, right? Which, you know, has its own, you know, set of alluring features, right? But uh, in all the wiki articles about the park, references are made to some kind of animal abuse and unsanctioned killing that occurred at the park, and people have gone wild with that online with creepypastas and stuff. Uh, but it turns out that, unfortunately, it was absolutely true. In 1989... Hundreds of wild black vultures landed on the island, and apparently, while Disney did secure some kind of permit to trap and safely move about a hundred of the vultures away from the island, uh, where they were being put in unsafe positions because of how close they were getting to the guests, and you know you can't really control what the guests do to wild animals, so it was starting to become kind of a big deal for everybody, and so they put in a request to move a hundred of them away, and uh, Disney and five of their employees were charged with far exceeding the limits placed on the action, uh, with reports of them firing rifles at hawks, beating vultures to death and destroying their nests with sticks, and smashing the eggs of egrets and ibises. Uh, over two months of investigations, officials further discovered that Discovery Island, on a 100-bird permit, had actually captured close to 200 uh, of these black vultures and crammed at least 72 of them into a windowless overheated shed with limited food and water in the amount of space normally meant for three vultures at once. Uh, and two of the workers at the pigeon loft had been illegally trying to capture owls, hawks, and falcons for who knows what purpose. Uh, it, it was the 80s, uh, so it's hard to understand the logic of some of these things today and how people thought they could get away with it. But apparently, according to this article I've been referencing from UPI at the time, uh, all the state charges are misdemeanors and carry pen penalties ranging from jail sentences of up to six months to fines of $500, which is not very much, but that was in the 80s also, so it's a lot more than it's worth now. Uh, those guys ended up being charged with 16 counts of animal cruelty, but unfortunately, all of the charges were dropped because Disney promised to clean up their act without even having to admit any wrongdoing, which is just insane to me. Um, but 10 years later, in the summer of 1999, the park closed down, and within a year, all its wildlife had been shipped off, shipped off to the new Animal Kingdom Park, which also had a land inside of it that was called Discovery Island, uh, and has just been sitting there, and the, the actual island, Discovery Island, has been sitting there abandoned ever since, in a worsening state of disrepair as it's repeatedly battered by hurricanes 
and other natural forces. And you can still pretty much just see it today from a lot of places in the resort, including the monorail, the shores of several hotels, anytime you go in the water and in that area. Um, and uh, so I also have this last story to share about Discovery Island from a Florida news website called Click Orlando, uh, where Discovery Island is merely the setting. Uh, I'm going to have Mathis read this for me, uh, and I think you'll all agree it is a story that can only be described as peak lockdown. It feels like a, a Cox and Crendor, <laughs> to be honest with you, but this is for Mathis. <laughs> Uh, I need you to know yeah, this was right. on Cox and Crendor. Just there. I knew it. I fucking knew it was. Oh, yeah. amazing. Amazing. A man is facing trespassing charges after security found him camping on Walt Disney World's Discovery Island, according to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Deputies said they were called to 4301 North World Drive Thursday after Richard McGuire, 42, was spotted on the Disney owned property, which is currently closed to the public. Orange County deputies searched for McGuire on foot by helicopter and by boat before finally making contact with him, according to an arrest report. When deputies told McGuire they had been when when deputies told McGuire they had been using a loudspeaker to address him, he said he didn't hear them because he was sleeping inside one of the buildings on the island, which he referred to as a tropical paradise, <laughs> according to the report. According to an arrest report, McGuire told deputies he was not aware that the property was off limits and that he had been camping there since Monday or Tuesday and planned to stay for about a week. I swear we talked about this on on the Disney I, I Hauntings just want to point episode. Out for the record, I think. that I stand by the fact that. This park was huge. No one was in this park. This was a little ass island. I'm with this guy. Yeah. He should have been allowed to camp this there. Dude, it was the this height dude of the was just playing. He was just playing Fallout yeah. by himself. He was just like Fallout RP server out in the fucking <laughs> water by himself. And he was like, oh, sick. What's this? Hardcore Look at this dungeon. Mode. This must be DLC. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He was a bug. Oh, Tropical anybody. Paradise DLC. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you're right. I think I did. I think we did bring this up in the, uh, in the, in the haunting this episode. I, yeah, this it's a hilarious a dream. story. I would. Anyone. Would love this moment of just like I was on this island and I was living my life and like I was there for a few it was days. Water that's, slides everywhere. It was wild. That's, again, this is the height of the pandemic. People like couldn't find toilet right. paper and stuff. Like people were like they couldn't afford to live in homes and shit. That's still happening. This guy, you're yeah. right. I got no problem with him staying there. Don't no get problem. me wrong. This guy, I'm I just jealous. think it's hilarious. I, I think it's hilarious that he called it a paradise. It's like very funny. Yeah, that's that's the best part. Uh, <laughs> but what's really insane is that literally right next to Discovery Island in Bay Lake lies a second abandoned theme park, Disney's River Country, which has been described as being themed after a rustic old-fashioned swimming hole of the type that you would see in a classic Goofy cartoon. Can't imagine why that would have fucking failed. But just to switch things up, this time we're going to read the audience a little skit to explain the nature of the legends that spring out of this place. And then afterwards, we'll get into the true story behind it all. Let me just send you guys the link tired of the holidays because i am i'm very very physically exhausted and i could just use sleep trying to run a business as well as dealing with long distance family and buying everything that everybody wants i'm just so tired the last thing i want to do is spend time at the post office thanks to stamps.com for sponsoring this episode and right about now seasonal excitement or dread is really starting to settle in especially for me and especially for small businesses which is also still me Slaying through traffic to the post office, inbox more like Blizzard than a want or Wonderland, you know what I'm saying? Rushing to send cards and gifts to your local clients. Don't. It's not too late to get your holiday mailing and shipping under control with Stamps.com. All you have to do is sign up now and you'll be printing your own postage within minutes. Stamps.com is your one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need to run your business right from your computer with no lines, no traffic, no hassle. Even save money with major discounts on USPS and UPS shipping rates up to 86% off. This holiday season, trade late nights for silent nights and get started with Stamps.com today. All you have to do is sign up with promo code CHILL for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale with no long-term commitments and no contracts. That's right, none of that. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code CHILL. That's it, that's all I have to say. Four-week trial, free postage and digital scale, stamps.com slash chill. Thanks to stamps.com for sponsoring this episode. 
I'll be the narrator and I'll read all the stage directions. Jesse, you be the camera guy. Oh boy. And Mathis, you be the reporter, okay? So this is our Eyes reading. I got guy. it for you. This is our reading of the River Country film audio reenactment by Mr. Scary Pasta from www.creepypasta.xyz. A deep robotic voice speaks on the black screen. November 1st, 2001. <laughs> Warning. The audio you are about to hear is classified and comes from a mysterious videotape discovered at an abandoned Disney park known as River Country. It is very disturbing. Even though the tape has been destroyed under unknown circumstances, the audio recovered will be very graphic and disturbing. However, due to age, the tape was damaged while the audio was recording, and some of the audio has been cut off. Other than that, everything else seems fine. Viewer discretion is advised. You have been warned. View and hear at your own risk. Good luck. Anonymous. <laughs> oh, it's from Anonymous? Dude, they're, they're everywhere. They're great. I love it when they hack, hack things. Uh, okay, here we go. Hey, is yep. it on? Camera's ready to go. Excellent. All right, let's okay, get filming. we're rolling in one, two, three... Action. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm and I'm here with my good buddy. We've come here to the Bend Disney Park known as River Country in order to do some urban exploration and maybe even take some items left here by the ex employees who used to yeah, work. Yeah, we tried to enter the park early in the day, but the damn security guards at the entrance wouldn't let us in. They kept saying the park <laughs> reached its guest capacity limit. Bastards. We tried to explain to them why we needed to get in the park, but the damn guards wouldn't even listen. They just shoved us out of the way from the gate and then threatened to tase us if we didn't leave. Man, what a bunch of dicks. I swear, next time I see him. Forget Ugh. it. Those guards aren't worth it. Even if they did shove us and threaten to tase us, only during these three hours a night, we could get past the park security. All right, let's move out. Okay. All right, now that introductions are out of the way and everyone knows what we're doing, let's get moving before it gets dark. This place gives me the creeps. All right, I'm behind you. Hurry up, man. Yeah, yeah, hold your horses. The cameraman runs and finally catches up to his friend. Now that you're caught up, let's go that down that water slide to get a better view of this mud hole. <laughs> Sounds good. The cameraman and his buddy run up the stairs to the top of the old water slide. We're almost there. Bet I can beat you to the top. Oh no, I'll beat you. The cameraman and his buddy race each other to the top and finally make it. <laughs> <gasps> Woo, boy, that was fun. Yeah, I agree. Look, looks like you beat me. Now that we're here at the top of the slide, what do we do now? We film from above this angle, I guess. Okay, sounds good. Wow, this is such a wonderful view. I agree with you. I feel like we're about to make out right now. I feel like we're heading into a little romantic hot and uh, heavy up here? Yeah, yeah, we're racing Ooh, each are other. We're the stars well, that together time. holding hands. Oh, you know, maybe. Like dudes Can who you imagine who become more. <laughs> the two co workers flirt the shit out of each other. <laughs> Can you imagine what it must have been like here before it closed down? Yeah, it must have been fun here. Okay, watch me slide down. Both the reporter and cameraman laugh at the joke of sliding down the water slide. <laughs> here, dude, let me help you. Oh, where's that hand going? Watch yourself, mister. <laughs> <laughs> Hilariously, the actual line is, hey, what are you doing? Ah! The cameraman pushes his friend down the slide. <laughs> ha! 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 Like the cameraman, that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman runs to the bottom of the slide and across the bridge to where the small lagoon is back to the shore of the pond, hoping his friend would surface from the water and be there. I better go meet up with him. Suddenly there's a loud splash, but no one surfaced. Hey, what was that? There is dead silence and the cameraman doesn't hear from his friend. Dude, dude, you there? The cameraman still doesn't hear from his friend and calls him again. Dude. Dude, come on. Answer me. I I'm sorry I pushed you in. The, the dedication cameraman. to not giving this other guy a name is phenomenal. I love it, in yeah. the, even in the panic. It's dude, garbled, is all dude, you can it muster. was lost. It was lost <laughs> in the tape. The cameraman calls for his friend's name one last time. Dude, this isn't funny anymore. Where are you? <laughs> that there wasn't is, his name at all. That's a dude. <laughs> there is no response, and the cameraman becomes frantic and decides to get some help. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is bad. What if he drowned? I, I, I better get help. While on his way to get help, the cameraman stops by a small, shallow pond, the kitty area, and there is the sound of a faint cough coming from behind him. Hey, wh what was that? Who's there? The cameraman turns around and sees that it's his friend who is behind him. Oh, thank God you're all right. I was so worried. The cameraman's friend doesn't respond to him and breathes heavily. Uh, you okay, dude? The cameraman's friend still doesn't respond and continues to breathe heavily. <laughs> There is the sound of gagging and bodily fluids splattering, and the man's breathing becomes raspy. Your 
Face? What happened to your face? The cameraman's friend mutters something to him in a raspy voice. He says, Oh shit, what? There is no hope. In where is the I water. don't even see it. It's like wait. not a line. It's dumb. They didn't put it. Oh, in. okay. I yeah. was like, wait, I looked. I, I swear I didn't see my name. Yeah. Just, just say there's no hope in the water. Yeah. There is no hope in the water. Perfect. <laughs> what the fool? What the <laughs> fool? The audio skips and cuts off, but then returns back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Spelled H O L L Y. Yep. L L Y. Yeah. Holy shit. Holy shit. It's a God, sh it's a God fearing cameraman. There right. are the sounds of running footsteps and heavy panting. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is going on? The cameraman is crying and running for his life. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? What the hell was that thing? That could have been my friend. It could have been. I have to get the hell out of here. The audio cuts off and skips again, but returns back to normal. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> It's like I'm in the Blair Witch or some shit. Please, God, forgive me. I didn't know. I didn't know. The cameraman cries and pants heavily. Then there is the sound of wheezing and gagging, along with bodily fluid splattering down. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy. Holy. Uh, the cameraman screams loudly and the audio cuts off and skips a third and final time. When the audio returns to normal, there is the sound of a furnace, and it goes quiet. A furnace? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that's meant to imply. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, as you can see, this audio drama... Thank you, guys. A round of applause for this. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so I really as you fell see, into the role. I love that. You literally fell into the water. That's what you did. It's true. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, this audio drama implies that on November 1st, 2001, the day before the, clo uh, the park closed in real life for refurbishments that ended up being permanent four years later after nothing happened. Allegedly, some extremely juvenile two-man production crew was at the park filming when they discovered some deadly entity in the water that caused the mm -hmm. park to be shut down, likely in order to prevent an outbreak of underwater Cthulhu zombies. Uh, this Honestly, is not... what? Yeah. I appreciate that. I don't want Cthulhu to arise. No, or pretty Cthulhu simple. zombies, though... I guess, yeah, wouldn't that be Cthulhu worshippers, really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of a, it's kind of an either or situation for yeah, Cthulhu. Yeah, I guess you're right. I, you know, I want to uh, make sure we're getting the actual monster correct. Obviously, in truth, this is not exactly an accurate... Wait, what? You're telling me what I just read, which was very cl clearly, relatively poorly written, is not real? <laughs> since, well, look, since it was probably just downturn in tourism caused by 9-11, which caused this park to finally, like be done like they closed for refurbishments for the season and then 9 11 and happened. Like, never mind it's and done. yeah exactly they were just like yeah. never mind this park is from the fucking 70s it sucks <laughs> where it's it's named it's themed after old-fashioned goofy swimming hole let's just get rid of it uh but the part about something deadly in the water was absolutely spot on uh as in 1980 just four years after river country's 1976 opening something terrible happened I have a quick blurb about it here from the Associated Press for Jesse to read, but I should warn our listeners that this is going to be another tough one to hear, and it involves a young child, so maybe skip ahead a couple minutes uh, if you're worried about it. Uh, and Jesse, with that, here you go. Orlando, Florida, AP. A rare but deadly disease caused by an amoeba found in Florida freshwater lakes has claimed its fourth victim. A New York youngster who spent his vacation swimming at Walt Disney World's River Country. The disease... Amoebic meningocephalitis. Men meningocephalitis, yeah. Attacks the nervous system and brain, doctors say. It killed two Florida children earlier this month and it appears to have been the cause of a death of another youngster, a state health official said. The latest death was that of an 11 year old boy who visited the Orlando, er Orlando area <laughs> during the first week of August and swam at the water attraction at Disney World. Dr. John McGarry, director of the Orange County Health Department. I said that guy. Uh, <laughs> the, the child died after the amoeba entered his nose, went through the nasal passage and attacked the nervous system, including the brain, said Dr. Robert Gunn, state epidemiologist. The boy, who was not identified by New York or Florida health authorities, died last Friday. Damn. Pretty fucking That's crazy. Cr that sucks, dude. Literally, That's awful. the water just gets to a certain temperature. These things can appear on the surface of the water. Total freak accident. Obviously, not a good thing. Disney eventually yeah, didn't allow people into the water anymore, and they'd have signs the up that said, like, the beach is for sunbathing only. That type of thing. 
uh, Tan- tangential is like yeah. my brother when I was a kid when got from the lake that we used to go to meningitis yeah and it almost fucking killed him he almost died like he was just straight yeah, up at crazy. eight years old just fucking almost kicked it it's yeah. crazy how and how fast and out of nowhere fucking comes. I knew a guy who got Giardia when we went on a camping trip one time Oof. just fucking awful almost died yeah uh you know gotta watch that water source um but yeah you can see how somebody heard that story about something that is in the water that gets in your brain and fucks you up and turns it into zombies 20 years later, 2001. But yeah, I yeah. honestly think that the real story is even more disturbing than the fake story because that was just some kid that got wiped out. So scary. There's no way to know, you know, like it's awful. Yeah. Uh, and now for another palate cleanser to wrap up black diamond challenging this time involving boobies. Yay! Uh, this one. Yeah. This one just boils down to one question. Everybody knows splash mountain, right? Mm-hmm. Currently it's finally getting a much needed overhaul to remove some outdated cultural depictions on the ride. Uh, but it's also probably the most famous log flume water ride with a giant drop at the end in the entire world, mm-hmm. partially because of its trademark feature, which is a photo op right at the beginning of the drop and a perfect and often very hilarious souvenir to commemorate your trip. Is that picture of you going right off the top of uh, Splash Mountain? And Disney has replicated that in, par- in rides all over their park. Other places do this now, too. It's kind of like something you almost expect at theme parks, but Splash Mountain is the iconic one. Um, however, some people have been said to engage in some certain <coughs> behavior that would have maybe have you believe that instead of Splash Mountain, that they thought maybe the ride should be called Flash Mountain. Oh, because they're going to call it Sploosh Mountain, which is no. Okay. No, Flash Mountain, because uh. they're supposed to have shown their boobies to the camera uh. just before the picture snapped. Uh. And apparently Yay. it happens a lot. This happens a lot, a lot, a lot. So next time you get to the gift shop at the end of the ride and your Look photo, your, no, next time you get to the gift shop at the end and your photo is mysteriously missing from the preview wall. There were titties on my photo. Pr- it's probably because somebody whipped Sploosh. out their boobies. Like, so what you're no. saying is don't look at the camera, turn around and look at people behind me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You mean awesome. to catch a glimpse? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're flashing. It looks like maybe a secret agent is making a signal or something. <laughs> you don't know. It's probably boobies. Yeah. That's okay. Yay, boobies. You're in the rivers of America now. It's all good. It makes yeah. sense. Uh, but I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, how do you know that this is true without evidence, Alex? Well, just so you know, the evidence is out there. There used to be a whole website for I it. I thought you were going to be like, I am the evidence. I tried. Here is a picture of my penis. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so there used to be a whole website for this. I'm going to link you two to an archive of this website right now. Uh, but I I'm will excited. let the listeners... Google this for yourselves if you want to find it, because oh, I'm not click. trying to. Oh, Jesus. I'm not going to try and publicly share someone's nudes for all of you to see like this, even uh, if they're cool yep, with yep. it. Yep, these are real. Yeah. Uh, for the rest of you who don't need to Google it and just want to take my word for it, please enjoy the guttural moans of my co-hosts as they oh, wow. explore this website. That guy's just got full-on cuppage going on that one. What's this one look like? Oh, did you just see? Oh, oh, oh hey. This has nothing to do with it. Henry Cavill is in talks with Amazon to executive produce and star in a Warhammer 40K series. Dude, he's just... He's just trying to make Fuck all his yes. dreams come true. God bless him. God Ooh, bless him. Sentence. Back to the titties. These are these are, all, these are these are titties. This yeah, is what this it's is. real. This is, titty, it's this is titty town. It's out there. We're out here. I, Go find him if you want to find him. Question. And I just want to put this out news there on both sides to uh to just um, no one can see these except for us. So I'm just gonna like the I think there's a conspiracy going on here, and I just want to ask the, what it is. Only women in the front, the very front. No, 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 that's not true. Oh, wait, there's one in the back. I just saw Never one. mind, conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. Debunked, debunked conspiracy. We debunked your conspiracy, Jesse. You know what? Yeah, that's why no, I do real. this show. Yeah, just so you can yeah. see yeah, I, I, boobies. That's how we have you here. Yeah, free boobies. It's but some for the good most part, it's most of the people in the front. And so I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the best spot. If you're going to do Flash Photography Fridays or whatever it is, you want to be mountain. right up front. Yeah, Flash, flash mountain, mountain, that one. Yeah. That one. I also have seen this, pictures this of like kid right here has no idea what he's missing behind him. Right there's here. a great picture of four guys playing smash on splash mountain where they, <laughs> I've seen that you know, they have a yes, TV awesome. and they have like four controllers and everything. There's, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that people do, but yeah, they, that, that's a thing. It happens. And if you can't see your picture, that's probably why I'm not going to say probably why, but it might be why uh, it is, is a not 0% chance. Yeah. But finally, uh, with that, you've made it. To we double to double black diamond expert wow. level. That was a like regular black diamond. That was, was all. That was all regular. Very impressive. Diamond. Yeah. Uh, double black diamond expert level is where I'm basically just going to have you read, uh, like the people out there, like two of the more conversation startery Disneyland creepy pastas that are out there. 
Uh, sure. These stories will be recognizable as set in a version of reality, but the specific details will be hard to swallow. Proceed with caution, but this time with the kind of caution you might use to stop yourself from being indoctrinated into a cult or Q-pilled, if there's even a difference between those two things. Q-pilled, I like that. Yeah. Uh, up first, we have a cracking story for Jesse to read for, uh, for from Reddit user Allison Drake 666 on r slash creepypasta. If you don't know what it is, uh, it's a small world. Uh, mm -hmm. is something you could probably get a, a very complete picture of if you just looked up a ride through of it. It was a ride originally created for the World's Fair with a message of world peace and its theme of tiny little multicultural dolls singing a very beautiful but extremely repetitive song in lots of languages is kind of perfect for a creepy story like this one, strange as it is. This story is called Small World at Disney is Not as Nice as It Seems. So this is for you, Jesse. Last year in May, my dad and his girlfriend decided to take us to Disneyland for my 17th birthday. It was a childhood dream, so I cried. Big, happy tears. Little did I know that what I was about to go through wasn't as fun. We got there, and the first ride was Small World, of course. Okay, I don't know why that's anyone's first ride, but... All it's right. so far in the back of the park, to be yeah, honest. Like, all right. Already I'm suspicious. Something every child has to see, I thought. It may be uh, is nice for kids, but people my age could understand the great horror I had to go through. We sat down in a boat with two other families. The first round was amazing. Again, I cried because of the major childhood dream that came true. We asked to go again. It was about to close. Wait, what? He went through once and he cried. Right, the first and then, round was yeah, it, it touched him. Just it was the first round. Went on. We went through it once. Yeah. <laughs> Wanted to go again. Decided, it was about to close. <laughs> All right, yeah. you know what? I'm not going to question any of this. Yeah, I cried because the major childhood dream that came true. We asked to go again. It was about to close, but they were willing to let us go through one more time. The lady smiled at us. Well, smiling. It was more like a weird, sinister smirk. The ride started to go again, and the lady waved at us slowly while keeping the smirk. It was hell. All the dolls were placed somewhere else, not at all their own country. But this Swedish doll, I, I think she was from Sweden, could be Dutch. Go back to your homeland, dolls. <laughs> God damn, stay off my, get out of my land. She kept coming back. She was everywhere. The dolls were moving like they usually do. They were shaking their heads, but one arm was pointed towards us the song played it was just horrible it was scary but this isn't the worst part we got out and the lady was still waving at the entrance she worked at disney i assume she was wearing her uniform we quickly sent uh we quickly went to the hotel and i went to one of the workers to tell about this woman her name patch said samira willington they said there wasn't anyone working there with that name. I said that she was there and that she maybe had sent uh, uh, and that they maybe had to send security. She seemed weird. Very weird. The next day at Disney, we walked past Small World. Samira wasn't there. I walked up to the worker and asked for Samira. He didn't know anyone with that name. He had some normal days at the park. It, uh, we had, boy, oh boy. We had some <clears throat> normal days at the park. It was fun until I went to the Tower of Terror alone. It was evening again, and we would leave the next day. It was the last ride again. I sat down, not knowing it would get so creepy again. I heard someone humming softly. I knew the song. It's a small world after all. I saw Samira sitting next to me, still humming. I got goosebumps all over my body. I screamed that I wanted to get out. They let me out. <laughs> nice. I get goosebumps again as I'm writing this. I hear the song in my head nonstop. Please, I beg you. Don't let your kids or yourself enjoy this ride. Please. I just realized something. My heart is pounding in my chest. I'm going to find a therapist right after this. Samira Wellington. Small world. I could be crazy. I could imagine this, but it creeps me out. I believe small world is more than just a ride. <gasps> be careful. 
whoa, whoa. Now, I think that he's trying to say that Samira Willington is like, it says small world. Like Samira Willington is the same as small world. I'm not sure what the revelation is supposed to be there. Yeah, I don't Just either. Just figure it out right then. But she, she's named after the ride or... What? SW, I don't know. SW, bro, it's the same. <laughs> the question is, though, is the implication that the ride is like a devil? Here's the thing. All I'll say is, if you all want to get like, I think I posted it there. Uh, on my Instagram, Notorious Cox. I think it's there. I'd have to go look. But one time I went to, to Disney. I went on Small World. And at a certain point, there is this creepy ass looking sun. And it literally just says to you, it's a small world. It's a small. And it like has <laughs> deadly eyes and it like looks like a hallucination thing. I recorded the whole thing and put it up there. I think it's where I put it. And all I'm saying yeah. is it's a weird ride, but I don't know that it's a demonic evil ride. That's like, I'm pointing at you. Yeah. If anything, if they were smart, they would actually do that. The last ride of the yeah. night, all the dolls, it would be like a horror ride. The very That'll last be, group to make go. it a Halloween amazing. thing, like yeah, only for Halloween season. Fuck around with it quietly. Well, I mean, okay, it begs the question: Is it more than a ride? Can the dolls mm -hmm. really change and move around like they're alive? Are there children being trapped in this ride forever? Is this what the game Fear is actually about? No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> Look for at sure. this thing. That's terrifying. Yeah, that's horrifying. Holy shit, dude! Instagram. It looks. It looks like it's trying to wipe my memory. Yeah, is what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like it's trying to take away my free will. Uh, oh man! But I mean, uh, I mean, no. It's no, it's not. I mean, I, I have a haunted doll specifically, and it's done nothing. I mean, so like, I'm gonna yeah. assume that the the Disney World and Land dolls are probably. Let's not just haunted. say no. It's not happening. Are you trying to let's say that creepy pasta isn't real? Yeah, I mean, look, dude, with with creepy pastas written this immaculately. Yeah, <laughs> let's be bold and say it's a no. Uh, <laughs> holy shit! Uh, <laughs> but there are, but there are. A couple creepy details out there floating around on the internet about this ride that do at least lend some credence to the notion. Uh, according to an article from earlier this year from thesun.co.uk, which anyone can tell you is a very, very, just a bastion <laughs> Not a tabloid of at journalism. All. Right. Uh, a TikTok user, The Mouselets, has revealed or at least resurfaced two quasi facts I've been hearing online for ages. Uh, I've never really been able to confirm this info from a verifiable official source. Uh, which is a problem that we'll get into a little bit later at the end of the next story that we read. Uh, but it's been repeated in forums again and again by people claiming to be cast members of the park, by people who, who claim to know these, this information. Firstly, one thing people say is that in order to save power and effort each morning, having to reset the entire system, which would be a big power drain and resyncing the giant animated clock on the outside of the building with the real time of day and stuff like that. Uh, the animatronic dolls, are supposedly meant to stay on all night, moving and dancing, just like they do in the day, except with all the music and lights turned off inside the ride building. It's a pretty creepy thing to think about, even if you're not, like, thinking in a paranormal way. It's just a creepy place. No, yeah, that like, sounds like... if you like were in there, that'd be fucked up. Uh, yeah, I would not be okay. <laughs> yeah, but even worse is imagining one of them watching you as you walk by, right? It's creepy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what's even creepier than that is that allegedly... Because the doll's hair is made of yarn, which stretches and sags as the water from the ride slowly moistens it over time, it creates an effect like the hair on the doll's heads is growing uh, slowly at the rate of human hair. How does that have mold on it? Well, actually, the reason is because it happens so much that there are several people online that I've seen who claim to have the job of actually going in and cutting that hair every once in a while with scissors overnight. I have no idea how they do that if the things are moving the whole time. Uh, but if you're out there listening and you have some knowledge about either of these things, please chime in on r slash Illuminati pod to let me know, pump me up, set me straight. I don't care. I want to know whether they leave the robots on at night in It's a Small World and whether or not anybody cuts the hair of the dolls because both of those things seem very fucked up to me. Uh, also, with respect to the idea of some people's souls somehow getting trapped in the characters on the ride or some shit like that. Here is a completely true story with no sinister overtones whatsoever. <laughs> in the past, there was known to be a clown high up in a balloon in the Disney World version of the ride who was notable not only because he was the only frowning character on the entire ride, the only character who's not smiling, but also because in his hand, he held a tiny little sign that said help on it in red block letters. 
However, eventually he was replaced or painted over to be a normal happy clown holding a balloon like the first act of a fucking Doctor Who episode about a ride that eats you and puts you in the ride and takes away your free will. Uh, I, I don't know. The dolls aren't alive, probably. Uh, but here is a picture of that clown before and after. Real. Photo evidence. There is a clown, a sad clown that says help in a balloon next to another clown that's smiling in that same balloon holding and its hand. Picture two, yeah, and then he has been replaced. He looks like he's <laughs> been fucking body snatched, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he looks actually kind of scary. He has like the, the same. He, everything is the same except they painted his face and got his ha- mm. and got rid of his help sign. And his half of his hair is now flipped up instead of both of them being flipped down. Yeah, it's like he's smiling. It's very weird. Yeah. So I don't know. Don't know if there's any sinister overtones of that at all. But it is weird that there was a clown balloon that was frowning that said "help" on it that eventually got painted over and smoothed over with a veneer of smiling clown face. Kind of creepy. Just saying. Uh, yeah, I agree. And now we're here. The last thing I have for you today is the one that got away from us. The Marble Hornets or My Dad's Tapes of Disney Urban Legends. And if we're being real, it's probably the most dangerous and potent kind of urban legend of all. Which is why it is a double black expert. A double black diamond expert. This is Abandoned by Disney. Uh, written by a man who goes by the name of Slime Beast. Uh, first of all, I want to have Mathis read through the first half for us. And then Jesse will tackle the second half because it's a lot to go through. And it's our grand finale. So some of you may have heard that the Disney Corporation is responsible for at least one real live ghost town. Disney built the Treasure Island Resort in Baker's Bay in the Bahamas and didn't start as a ghost town. Disney's cruise ships would actually stop at the resort and leave tourists there to relax in luxury. This is a fact. Look it up. Disney blew 30 million on the place. Wait, did you say it's not? It's not. Okay. Disney blew 30 million on the place. Yes, that's 30 million dollars. Then they abandoned it. Disney blamed the shallow waters too shallow for their ships to safely operate. And there was even blame cast on the uh, there was even blame cast on the workers saying that since they were from the Bahamas, they were too lazy to work a regular schedule. That's racist. Uh, That's where the factual nature of their story ends. It wasn't because of the sand and it obviously wasn't because foreigners are lazy. Both are convenient excuses. No, I sincerely doubt those reasons were legitimate. Why don't I buy the official story? Because of Mowgli's palace. Near the beachside city of Emerald Isle in North Carolina, Disney began construction of Mowgli's Palace in the late 1990s. The concept was a jungle-themed resort with a large, you guessed it, palace in the center of the whole thing. If you're unfamiliar with the character of Mowgli, then you, bet, then you might better remember the story The Jungle Book. If you haven't seen it anywhere else, you'd know it was as the Disney cartoon from decades past. Mowgli is an abandoned child in the jungle, essentially raised by animals and simultaneously threatened and pursued by other animals. Mowgli's Palace was a controversial was a controversial undertaking from the start. Disney brought up a ton of high-priced land for the project, uh, bought up rather a ton of high-priced land for the project, and there was actually a scandal surrounding some of the purchases. The local government claimed eminent domain on people's homes, then turned around and sold the properties to Disney. At one point, a home that had just been constructed was immediately condemned with little to no explanation. The land grabbed up by the government was supposedly for some fictional highway project. Knowing full well what was going on, people started calling it Mickey Mouse Highway. Then there was the concept art. A group of stuffed shirts from uh, Disney Company actually held a, su- held a city meeting. They intended to sell everyone on how lucrative this project was going to be for everyone. When they showed the concept art, this gigantic Indian palace surrounded by jungles, staffed with men and women in loincloths and tribal gear, well, suffice to say everyone flipped their shit. We're talking about a large Indian palace, jungle, and loincloths, not only in the center of a relatively wealthy area, but also a somewhat xenophobic area of the southern USA. It was a questionable mix at, the, at that point in history. One member of the crowd tried to storm the stage, but he was quickly subdued by security after he managed to break one of the presentation's boards over his knee. Okay. Disney took that community and essentially broke it over its knee as well. The houses were raised, the land was cleared, and there wasn't a damn thing anyone could do or say about it. Local TV and newspapers were against the resort at the beginning, but some insane connection between Disney's media holdings and the local venues came into play, and their opinions turned on a dime. So anyway, Treasure Island, the Bahamas, Disney sunk those millions in and then split. The same thing happened with Mowgli's Palace. Construction was complete, visitors actually stayed at the resort, the surrounding communities were flooded with traffic and the usual annoyances associated with an influx of lost and irate tourists. Then it all just stopped. Disney shut it down and nobody knew what the hell to think. But they were pretty happy about it. Disney's loss was pretty hilarious and wonderful to a large group of folks who didn't want this place in the first place. I honestly didn't give the place another thought since hearing it closed over a decade ago. 
I live maybe four hours from Emerald Isle, so I really I only heard the rumblings and didn't experience any of it firsthand. Then I read this article from someone who had explored the Treasure Island Resort and posted a whole blog about all the crazy shit he found there. Stuff just left behind. Things smashed, defaced, probably ruined by the disgruntled former employees who had lost their jobs. Hell, the locals from all around probably had a hand in wrecking the path in the a hand in wrecking the, that place. People there just felt as angry about Treasure Island as folks here did about Mowgli's Palace. Plus, there were rumors that Disney had released their aquarium stock into the local war waters when they closed, including sharks. Who wouldn't want to take a few swings at some merchandise after that? Well, what I'm getting at is this that this blog about Treasure Island got me thinking. Even though many years had passed since its closing, I figured it might be cool to do some urban exploration at Mowgli's Palace. Take some photos, write about my experience, and probably see if there was anything I could take home as a memento. I'm not going to say I wasted no I'm I'm not going to say I wasted no time in getting there because honestly it took me another year after I first found that Treasure Island article to get around to going up to Emerald Isle. Over the course of that year, I did a lot of research on the Palace Resort or rather I tried to. Naturally, <clears throat> no official Disney site or resource made any mention of the place that had been scrubbed clean. Even odder, however, was that nobody before myself had apparently thought to blog about the place or even post a photo. None of the local TV or newspaper sites had one word about the place, though that was to be expected since they all swung Disney's way. They wouldn't be out there uh, lauding their embarrassment, you know? Recently, I learned that corporations can actually ask Google, for example, to remove links from search results, basically for no good reason. Looking back, it's probably not that nobody spoke of the resort, but rather their words were made inaccessible. This is such modern day bullshit. I just want to point that out. As a kid <laughs> who grew up in the 90s with the Disney Channel, this is such like, yeah. there was no evidence because Google removed it. I'm already irate, but OK, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> they removed it. So in the end, I could barely find the place. All I had to, to go on was an old as hell map I'd received in the mail back in the 90s. It was a promotional item sent out to people who had recently been to Disney World. And I guess since I had been there in the 80s, that was recent. <laughs> Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> I love this. You guys just kind of just trying to plug some things in and like, making some weird claims. If you're a kid and this like, mm -hmm. you're like, wow, this must be real. And then go, like, I guess you could buy it. But like anyone who grew up in the 80s and 90s are like. No, dude, Disney was on TV all. We would have known about this if this was real. <laughs> I didn't really intend to hang on to it. It just got shoved in with my books and comics from my childhood. Uh huh. Sure. I'd only remembered it months into my research. And even then, it took me a few, another few weeks to locate the storage bin my parents had shoved it all into. So we remembered that his parents had shoved this into a bin and was able, like, that's such a weird claim. <laughs> But I didn't find it. Locals were no help, as most were transplants who had moved to the beach in recent years or old residents who just sneered at me and made rude gestures the second I managed to where uh, managed to say, where would I find Mowgli's? The drive took me through an inordinately long corridor of overgrowth, tropical plants that had run rampant and overpopulated the area mixed with the native species of the flora that actually belonged there and had tried to reclaim the land. I was in awe when I reached the front gates of the resort. Tremendous monolithic wooden gates whose supports to either side looked like they must have been cut from giant sequoias. The gate itself had been gouged in several places by woodpeckers and eaten away at the base by burrowing insects. Hanging on the gate was a sheet of metal with some random scrap with hand-painted letters scrawled in black, abandoned by Disney. Clearly the handiwork of some past local or an employee who wanted to make some small protest. <laughs> The gates were open enough to walk through, but not drive. So grabbing my digital camera and the map, whose flip side showed a layout of the resort, I set off on foot. The inner grounds of the place were just as overgrown as the entryway. Palm trees stood untended and ragged among piles of their own coconuts. Banana plants sim uh, similarly stood in their own stinking bug riddled refuse. <laughs> this, there was this sort of class that doesn't. There's no way wildlife would be all over this shit. <laughs> they would be like eating up I all the bananas. There would be a pile it's of coconuts. Abandoned by Disney, bro. Yeah, abandoned by Disney. There was a sort of clash between order and chaos as carefully planted rows of perennial flowers mixed with obnoxious tall weeds and stinking blackened mushrooms. All that remained of any outdoor structures were broken, rotting wood of various charred bits of unidentified material. What was most likely an information booth or an outdoor bar was now simply a pile of assorted debris chopped up by past vandalism and ravaged by the weather. The most interesting thing on the grounds was a statue of Baloo, the friendly bear from the Jungle Book, which stood in a sort of courtyard in the front of the main building. 
He was frozen in a jovial wave toward no one, staring into an empty space with a silly toothy grin as bird shit covered whole swaths of his fur and vines and snared his platform. I approached the main building, the palace, only to find the outside of the building covered in graffiti where the original paint had peeled and chipped away. The front doors weren't just open, they had been taken off their hinges and were stolen. Above the front doors or the gaping maw where they had been, someone once again painted, abandoned by Disney. So that's the end of part one of the story. And I just want to say, the thing that's crazy about this, obviously, this is not a true story. <laughs> what? Dis Jesse's exactly right. Disney had an entire channel. I believe it was called Zoog Disney or something like that. Oh my God, just, I remember that. Holy shit. It was shit. literally just a commercial for Disney. Yeah, it was just... It was like a fucking... They'd show like movies and Disneyland shit all the time. If you don't remember uh, old school Disney Channel when you had to like pay special for this yep. little extra thing, like yeah. seriously, between every damn show yeah. was five minutes of advertisement for Disney parks. Anything yeah, there was no Disney, advertising for any actual product. It was all just Disney advertising other Disney I shows, Disney parks. I would immediately have been like, oh, that was real, because I remember I watched it every single day. Like, no way. Yeah. This is... Yeah. It would have been all yeah. over. So Mowgli's Palace never existed. Treasure Island never existed, even though Treasure Island is the name of the island that Discovery Island eventually became in another story that's not related to this and is also in a bay, but is not in the Bahamas. Uh, but the thing that was fucked up and the reason that this is in the final double diamond black diamond expert is because when I went to verify elements of this story, I found corroborating evidence for every single part of it. I found people that said that they've been to the park. I saw, I found people that said they worked there. I found people that said they remember it. I saw people that posted pictures of them going there. I found pictures of everything. I found pictures of the place in the Bahamas where they dredged the docks to be the docks of fucking Treasure what? Island. I found evidence of all of it, and I realized that uh, fucking Mr. Mr. Uh, what's his name? Who wrote this? Slime Beast was writing a creepypasta. Slime Beast did something really genius. He found, for found those writing. things first and then built a story around he it. He just, he's kind of slant slant details. He took like Things from th like that were kind of believable things that you've heard about Disneyland and kind of made them into like one sort of like MCU style Disney verse story. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is cool from a storytelling perspective because it makes the story, especially if you're dumb or you're young and you don't remember what the 90s were like, like a pretty believable thing because you're not look. It, it doesn't set off the alarm bells that the, the it's a small world story immediately does when it has really weird language and inconsistencies within the story this one's extremely well researched and extremely clever right uh in a way but the scary part is is that nobody's willing to read about it and find out that it's not fake they will do the googling that i just did and, and i then found be like That's articles it. i found articles about disney's abandoned theme parks and it's like discovery island river country Mowgli's palace treasure island and i'm like dude those aren't even fucking real like what are you talking about and uh, like I said, same thing with the TikTok thing in the, in the it's a small world thing where they're saying these the hair grows and stuff. I actually don't know if that's true because in the in the back in the day day, people would write things on the Internet and they wouldn't have to verify them because if somebody said they fucking right. worked at Disneyland, it was probably because they did. You My know what I mean? But now there's Nintendo, so much. He told me. Yeah. 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 And now you've got all these different ulterior motives and wars being played with information all the time. And so you're ending up with this crazy story that is now, even though. Like, I, I knew you guys were going to be like, there's no way this is true. There's absolutely no way this is true. Uh, but the thing that's even crazier and that I kind of want to shame anybody who believed this, unless you were like 12 years old or some shit, like five, <laughs> right? But the second half of the story is a lot different from the first half of the story. I'm going to have Jesse read it for us now. <laughs> yes! Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this episode. And we all know with the bustling holiday season well underway, ready to eat meal delivery can lend a helping hand. Factor shops, preps, cooks, and delivers to your door so you can enjoy chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals during the holidays, minus all that hassle. Plus, with 34 meals a week, including Gourmet Plus, Keto, Calorie Smart, Vegan and Veggie, and 36 other weekly add-ons, you'll have plenty of nutritious, flavorful options to choose from. My holidays are already jam-packed as it is. Luckily, Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals make it easy to fuel up when I'm on the go and save time with meals delivered, ready to eat, ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. Factor now offers 34 meals a week and 36 add-ons, like I said, like smoothies and juice and snacks and more to keep me going no matter what I have going on. 
Factor is also cheaper than dining out and takeout. Put the money you save towards holiday fun in you time. And thanks to Factor's commitment to the ingredients with integrity, you can enjoy flavorful chef-crafted meals guilt-free like their creamy Parmesan chicken and three bean veggie chili. Factor has everything I need for a week full of flavorful, nutritious seats in addition to ready-to-eat meals. They have cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep me energized during the frantic holiday times. So all you gotta do is head over to go.factor75.com slash chill60 and use code chill60 to get 60% off your first box. Listen close, that's code chill60 at go.factor75.com slash chill60 to get 60% off your first box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Let and the we're chaos just begin. It's like the end of Django Unchained. It's just like a different, it's a different situation. Sure, yeah. From the rest Suddenly of the, the director the shows of the up and he's Australian for some reason. And, you know, yeah. I wish I could tell you about all the awesome stuff I saw inside the palace. Forgotten statues, abandoned catch registers, a full-fledged secret society of homeless bums. But no, the inside of the building was so stark, so bare, that I actually think people had stolen the molding off the walls. Anything that was too big to steal, counters, desks, giant fake trees, they were all resting amid this empty echo chamber that amplified my every step like a slow rat-a-tat of a machine gun. I checked the floor plan and headed to all the locations that might seem in any way interesting. The kitchen was, as you'd imagine, an empty industrial food prep area with all the appliances in space, no expenses spared. Every glass surface was broken, every door knocked off its hinges, every metal surface kicked and dented. The entire place smelled like very old piss. Not sure how one would know very old piss, but like, I guess we kind of know, like, the dude who didn't flush Like the apple smell. juice, yeah. but there's like salt in it, mm-hmm. yeah. The huge freezer, not even remotely cool now, had row upon row of empty shelf space, hooks hung from the ceiling probably for hanging cuts of meat, and... As I stood inside for a moment, I noticed they were swinging. Each hook swung in a random direction, but their movements were so slow and small that it almost was impossible to see. I figured it had been caused by my footsteps, so I stopped one from swinging by clutching it with my fist, then carefully let go. But within seconds, it started to swing once more. Anyway, I moved on. The bathrooms were in, <laughs> such, in much the same state as the rest of the place. Just like Treasure Island Resort, someone had methodically smashed each porcelain commode with coconuts or other implements. There was about half an inch of rancid, stinking, stagnant water on the floor, so I didn't stay there very long. What's odd is that the toilets and the sinks and the bidets in the ladies' room, yes, I went there, all dripped bidets. Leaked or just ran freely. It seemed to me that they should have shut off water long, long ago. There were plenty of rooms in the resort, but naturally, I didn't have time to look through them all. The few I did peer into were similarly wrecked, and I didn't I didn't expect to find anything there. I thought there was actually a television or radio in one room, as I really think I heard quiet conversation coming out. Though it was like a whisper, probably my own breathing echoing on the silence, or just another uh, another case of the sound of water uh, flowing, playing tricks on my mind. This is what it sounded like. I don't believe it. Short, unknown reply. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Your father told you. Unknown reply, or possibly just weeping. I know, I know, it sounds ridiculous. I'm just telling you what I experienced, why I thought there might have been something running in that room or worse, some vagrants who had holed up in there and probably would have knifed me. At the front doors of the palace again, I figured I hadn't found anything of note and had wasted the trip up. As I looked out the door, I noticed something interesting interesting in the courtyard that I'd apparently missed. Something that would give me at least one thing to show for all my trouble, even if It was just a photograph. There, as a lifelike statue of a python, maybe 80 feet long, coiled up and sunning itself on a pedestal right in the center of the area. It was almost time for the sun to start setting, 
So the light fell upon the object in a perfect way for the photograph. I approached the python and snapped the photo. Then I stood on my toes and snapped another. I moved closer again to get the detail of this face. Slowly, casually, the python lifted its head, looked directly into my eyes, turned, and slithered off the pedestal across the grass and into the trees, all 80 feet of it. Its head long disappeared into the woods before its tail even left the sunning spot. Disney had released all their exotic animals onto the grounds. Right there on my floor plan map was the reptile house. I should have known. <laughs> I read about the sharks at Treasure Island. I should have known they'd done this. I was... <laughs> I, I should have known they'd Those done Those bastards! This. I should have known! Those damn dirty bastards! I was dumbfounded. Just utterly stupefied. My mouth must have been hanging open for the longest time before I came back down to earth and snapped it shut. I blinked a few times and backed away from where the snake had been, back towards the palace. Why not go to the exit? All right. No, I, no listen, you're going to ruin the story, Jesse. Keep Even reading. though it was totally gone, I still wasn't taking any chances and backed my way into the building. Took a few deep breaths and slapped my own face to get myself right in the head again after that. I looked for a pal uh, place. Ooh. I looked for a place to sit down as my legs were feeling a bit like jelly at this point. Of course, there was no place to sit down unless I wanted to recline in broken glass and dead leaf carpet or haul myself onto a desk of questionable reliability. I had seen some stairs near the palace's lobby and decided to give it a seat there until I felt better. The staircase was far enough away from the front of the building to be relatively clean. Save for startling accumulation of dust, I pulled a small, uh, I pulled a wedge of metal off the wall, which once again, uh, painted with abandoned by Disney motto, I'd become accustomed to. I placed the wedge on the stairs and sat on it to keep at least somewhat clean. The stairway led downward, below ground level. Using my camera flashlight as sort of a improvised flashlight, I could see that the staircase ended in a metal mesh door with a padlock. A sign on the door, a real sign read, Mascots only, thank you. This perked up my spirits a little bit. For two reasons. One, a mascots only area would have uh, would definitely have had some interesting stuff back in the day. Two, the padlock was still in place. Nobody had gone down there. Not the vandals, not the looters, nobody. This was the one place I could actually explore. And perhaps... Find something interesting to photograph or wantonly steal. I'd come to this palace essentially agreeing with myself that it was okay to take anything I wanted because, hey, abandoned. It didn't take much for me to bust the lock. Well, actually, that's wrong. It didn't take much to bust the metal plate that the, uh, on the wall that the padlock was hooked to. Time and decay had done most of the work for me, and I was able to bend the metal plate enough to pull the screws out of the wall. Something nobody else had apparently thought of or hadn't been able to do at the time. The mascot's only area was startlingly, was a startling and very welcome change from the rest of the building I'd seen. For one, every second or third fluorescent light overhead was illuminated. Mm, okay, even though they flickered and faded randomly. Also, nothing had been stolen or broken, even if age and exposure were definitely taking their toll. Tables had notepads and pens. There were clocks, even a punch-in clock on the wall, complete with filled-out time cards. Chairs were scattered around, and there was even a small break room with an old static-filled television and long rotted-out food and drink on the counters. It was like one of those post-apocalypse movies where everything is left in the state of evacuation. As I walked the maze-like sub-basement, hallways of mascots-only area, the sights just became more and more interesting. As I went further, desks and table were knocked over, paper scattered and almost melded with damp floor. The large carpet of mold was slowly overtaking the real rotting crimson floor cover. Everything was just sort of squishy. Anything wood disintegrated into mush when applied, even the least amount of force. And clothing items hanging on hooks in one of the rooms simply fell to moist threads if I tried to unhook them. I know all about moist threads. <laughs> One thing annoyed me 
Uh, one thing that annoyed me was that the light was becoming more sparse and unreliable as I went further into the dank, suffocating depths of the place. Eventually, I reached a black and yellow striped door with the words Character Prep 1 stenciled on it. The door wouldn't open at first. I figured this was probably where the costumes were kept, and I definitely wanted a photograph of that twisted, stinking mess. Try as I might, whatever angle or trick I tried, the door wouldn't budge. That is, until I gave up and started to walk away. That was when there was a slight popping sound, and the door creaked open slowly. Inside the room was completely dark, pitch black. I used the camera flash to look for a light switch uh, in the wall by the door. There was nothing. As I made my search, I was jarred out of my sense of excitement by a loud electrical buzz. Rows of lights overhead suddenly flashed a life, flickering and fading in and out like the rest uh, uh, had passed. I took a second for my eyes to adjust, and it seemed like the light was going to just keep getting brighter until the bulbs exploded. But just when I thought it reached that critical stage, lights dimmed a bit and steadied. The room was exactly as I had pictured it. Various Disney costumes hung on the walls, fully put together like strange cartoon cadavers hung from invisible nooses. There was an entire rack of loincloths and native clothes on hangers toward the back. What I found odd and what I wanted to photograph right away was a Mickey Mouse costume in the center of the room. Unlike the other's costumes, it was lying on its back in the center of the room, uh, in the center of the floor, like a murder victim. The fur in the costume was rotting and shedding, creating bare patches. What was even odder, however, was the coloring of the costume. It was like a photo negative of the actual Mickey Mouse. Black where it should be white, <laughs> white where it should be black, and normal uh, his normally red overalls were light blue. The sight was off-putting enough that I actually put off photographing the thing until last. Took a picture of the costumes hanging on the walls, upward angles, downward angles, side shots to show the entire row of frozen, putrid cartoon faces, some with plastic eyes missing. Then I decided to stage a shot. Just one of the bedraggled, bedraggled, bedraggled characters' heads on a <laughs> slick, grimy floor. I reached for the headpiece of Donald Duck costume and carefully removed it so the thing wouldn't fall apart in my hands. As I looked into the face of the wide eye, moldering head, I loudly, a loud, what the, sh as I looked into the face of the wide eyed, moldering head, a loud clattering sound made me jump with fright. I looked down at my feet and there between my shoes was a human skull. It had fallen out of the mascot head and shattered into pieces at my feet. Only the empty face and lower jaw remained staring up at me. I dropped the duck head immediately as you'd expect and moved for the door. As I stood in the doorway, I looked back at the skull on the floor. I had to take a picture of it. You know, I, I had to for any number of reasons that may seem silly, but only if you don't think it through, I, I need proof of what had happened, especially <laughs> If Disney was going to somehow make this go away, I had no doubt in my mind right from the start that even if this was gross negligence, Disney was responsible for this. That's when Mickey, the photo negative opposite Mickey on the floor, started to get up. First sitting up, then climbing to his feet, the Mickey Mouse costumer, whoever was inside, stood there at the center of the room. It's fake face uh, just started, to, I guess that's staring. It's fake face just staring directly at me as I mumbled, no, <laughs> over and over and over. Realistic. Very. No, no. With hands shaking, a violently thrashing heart and legs that once again turned to jelly, I managed to lift the camera and aim it at the opposite creature, now quietly sizing me up. The digital camera screen display only dead pixels in this shape of the thing. It was a perfect silhouette of the Mickey costume. As the camera moved in my unsteady hands, the dead pixels spread, marring the screen wherever Mickey's outline moved to. Then the camera died, went blank and quiet and broken. 
I raised my eyes once again to the Mickey Mouse costume. Hey, it said in a hush. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> hey, it said in a hush, <laughs> perverted, but perfectly executed Mickey Mouse voice. Want to see my head come off? <laughs> it started to pull off its own head, working its clumsy, Tommy Patera flashbacks, clad <laughs> fingers around its neck with clawing and patient movements similar to a wounded man trying to pull himself free of a predator's jaws. That thing we all know. As it worked its digits into its neck, so much blood. So much thick, chunky, yellow blood. <sighs> I turned away as I heard a sickening tear of uh, cloth and flesh. Only cared about getting away. Above the doorway of this room, I saw... The final message clawed into the metal with bone and fingernails abandoned by God. Oh. I never got the pictures out of my camera. I never wrote the blog entry about of it. Not. After I ran from that place, I fled for my sanity. If not my very life, I knew why Disney didn't want anyone to know about this place. They didn't want anyone like me getting in. They didn't want anything like that getting out. And that <gasps> Whoa! is abandoned by Disney, the granddaddy of all creepy pasta about Disneyland and possibly the reason Five Nights at Freddy's exists. Thank you, Slime Beast, for writing that story. You're a your champ. Uh again. Does that close the book on, on Disney like stuff yeah. for you to cover in the I mean, future? Yeah, I mean, again, none of that is true. Oh, yeah. Palace no, didn't exist. no way treasure island didn't exist even though people said they worked at this place people said they've been when you there say stuff like that that is how i feel when people are like i saw the aliens i was there you I shut your fucking same. mouth there's a different that's entirely okay. different you cannot conflate all the two right. yeah. i literally told you all the stories that i told you today to show you all the evidence that there is about this story that it used like this story uses all the information that i just told you and wrote a fictional story with it and uh it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty fucked up that people like will believe fucking anything, right? Uh, yeah. So here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. Because of this, and how no. easy it was for me to find stuff like this, it's hard for me to say that anything that we talked about today is true. As a matter of fact, which leaves me with this chilling challenge to prove that anything that I said today is true without any official confirmation from Disney themselves. Which is scary because it means that Disney kind of has the final say on whether or not they did anything. Uh, or that if anything happens, it's, it's just absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, shout outs to anyone from Disney who has to listen to this show and make sure that you don't want to sue us. <laughs> we tried our best to be accurate. We try to be true. Sorry about the bad PR stuff, but truth is truth. It wasn't my intention to do anything beyond that, but please loyal Chiluminots use the ubiquity of abandoned by Disney's falsehoods as a cautionary tale when looking into stuff like this yourself. And remember that whenever you're looking into something mysterious and stimulating your imagination with it, you should also imagine a great big or was it after everything you read? <laughs> that's basically my whole purpose with this entire being on the show. It's like the MJ 12 episode right before it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like both same message under different, different contexts. Yes. Let me know if you would like me to do another episode like this in the subreddit. I love you. Patreon.com slash Chilmanati pod and <laughs> teaser for the mini. So if you want to go be a patron right now, go listen to the mini. So that comes out right after this episode and find out why so many people are interested in the actors who play Aladdin in the parks and what's so special about them. I will reveal it on the mini zone. I'll see you there. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And J Alex said it all. We'll see you there. Well, and we'll see you here next week. Goodbye, right. everybody. Bye. Anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.